Welcome to Roundtable. I'm your host, Adam Cook. This week, we're once again going around the Richmond Municipal Council table as your municipal councillors discuss a number of issues that could have an impact on you in the short term, but also on your children and grandchildren over the long term in Richmond County. Later on in this week's edition of Roundtable, we'll set up a discussion that happened at a recent Committee of the Whole meeting for Richmond Council about an application to a federal provincial infrastructure program. If the funding comes through, it could not only address some serious aging infrastructure issues in the county, but it could also have an impact for area ratepayers in Arishat and Petit de Gras. But we begin tonight's program with a couple of discussions that involve how Richmond County residents can use their land and how they can use both access roads that lead to different properties, but also how they can use their own properties to store things like recreational vehicles. Both of those items came up back-to-back at the recent Committee of the Whole meeting of Richmond Council, and some councillors in the warden had a bit of a disagreement as to whether some of these items should come to the council table at this particular Committee of the Whole meeting. So let's set things up by turning things over to Richmond Warden Amanda Mumbercat. Okay, so the next uh, two items are more related to um, land use uh, type of Uh, activity. So the first is, this is listed, I will say, as land use bylaws regarding uh, customer service improvements and definitions of private roads. Um, Just to give you a little background, because I think at the end of the day, it's really about our subdivision bylaw. Um, But after meeting with a constituent in District 4, Councillor Sean Sampson and I, so we're both, we both are appointees to the Eastern District Planning Commission. Um, uh, we were made aware of an opportunity to improve our subdivision bylaws that would potentially provide better customer service and and clarity, Um, specifically with regards to the process of -of right-of-ways and uh, the definitions of private roads. So, you know, one of the examples, I guess, that was provided is that, um, you know, for landowners who share a right-of-way, could they be notified by the development officer or the planning commission to be given the opportunity to provide information, um, you know, if that if that right of way was kind of leading to a, you know, a property that was being applied for a subdivision under that bylaw, um, if you know when issues around, uh, you know, requirements being met, or if there is potential legal challenge, what's the level of investigation that should be occurring, and different things like that. So. Um, you know, I've got a kind of a list of examples here that I guess at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't know that we want to get into too much detail here at council because I really feel like it's probably a discussion for planning advisory committee. Um, so would, you know, would councillors be um, supportive of maybe having that referred to planning advisory committee for some discussion? Um, and then, you know, I know I'm not a part of that committee, um, but uh, I'd be happy to attend to provide some of that background information and, and kind of do a written summary for the committee members so that we could, um, so that we have something to really review. I've been part of these discussions with you and, and I think that's a great idea on your part and, and good of you to offer if you could put a summary together and, and have it ready for uh, the planning uh, planning advisory committee. Uh, just just uh, so we're aware of the situation and, and and um, the steps uh, forward to uh, to improve those situations. Yeah, I would say yeah. You probably uh, best made to speak to John Bain on that. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, he may just want a written summary, or whether or not he'd want a presentation or not. But I think he would know best. Yeah, I think so. And I and I should you know I should say I mean obviously if we're you know any anything I'd be preparing or you know to, to provide the planning advisory committee I'd be definitely working with John on that because I don't yeah. want to uh, I don't want to assume that my interpretation of a, of a you know a bylaw is related to land right. use planning or subdividing is, is I'm no expert in that field so right. yeah thank you Brent or Council Brent for that but yeah. um, mm-hmm. 
I, 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 I just think your summary would help the conversation. That's all. Right. So I, I think it's. Yeah. Yeah. Deputy that Warden, is, or is, is that okay with you? I think I'm just trying to remember who was on planning advisory committee. I, and well, I Brent is the chairperson. Okay. Planning advisory, right? Just to, re to refer to John Bain yep. on that. And, and yeah. The best to, to do with how, how to move forward on it. Okay. You, you need a motion to, uh, I, I don't think you're just saying. I don't think so. so. Yeah, I, I don't think we need a motion to that effect. I think the time for a motion would be maybe if, you know, if planning advisory decides to make a recommendation to change a subdivision right. bylaw. But at this point, it's just really, um, I just really wanted to put it on the radar that for information purposes that Councillor Sean and I were having those conversations and then, um, and then there might be some opportunity for some improvements there. I think the timing could be really good too with the work that we're doing on, um, you know, uh, Plan Eastern Nova and Plan Richmond specifically, right? So um, I just thought I'd take advantage of the timing. So, okay, thanks for your advice on that, Councillor Brent Sampson. And uh, we'll, I'll get on top of that and reach out to John Bain. Um, okay. The next item on our agenda then is, uh, again, this is written as recreational vehicles uh, bylaw, but I do believe um, that the issue we're running into is related to the Alma Dam planning strategy and the land use bylaw that is, applies specifically to Alma Dam. Um, and uh, uh, according to the information I have, it's coming down to the definition of an accessory building. Um, so it's being interpreted interpreted by our planning staff to in, include an RV, I believe, as a as a, a definition of an accessory building. And the current restriction is, um, as I understand it, is that there is only one um, of these allowed per uh, property uh, in the Isle Madan planning area. Um, so you know, in discussing with uh, John Bain early on on this matter, you know. He, you know, he and I were talking about it and his interpretation of that. And, uh, and, you know, he indicated that, you know, the, the bot, like it, there are, there are locations in the County specifically around the Grand Lake area, which is an area uh, that I asked him about specifically because I did receive a complaint about it. Um, it's, it looks like the, the bylaw is not being enforced in that area because there's more than one RV per one specific property. Um, however, uh, you know, having discussed that with him and then receiving several letters from residents, and I want to thank everybody who wrote in, I have to tell you that makes a really big difference and it gives us more uh, information to work with. Um, so thanks to everybody who wrote letters. Um, you know, maybe we need to look at modernizing some of those restrictions um, for the Almadian uh, planning area with regards to that specifically. Um, so, you know, at, at the end of the day, our planning commission staff is obligated to enforce the bylaws we have in place now. We can't just choose to ignore them. Um, so I fully support them in that. Uh, um, but I did also, I, you know, I think it's, it's more past time maybe for us to have a discussion on modernizing, but, you know, understanding that everything is a balance kind of between protecting our environment being fair to commercial campground owners or potential owners, as well as preserving the quality of life of our residents. We wanna be able to gather campfires and, and uh, do the things that people love to do here in Richmond County. So it is a balancing act. Um, Councillor Brent Sampson, uh, before I take your ask for your comment, um, I just wanna note that uh, the deputy warden has removed herself from the discussion due to a conflict. Um, so Councillor Sampson, did you have a comment? Yeah, so no, I actually I heard from several residents as well, but but looking into this, it's um, just to make it clear for me, it's it's not exactly a county bylaw. This has to do with the zoning issues and so on. So we're kind of, to be honest, we're sort of putting the cart before the horse here tonight. It's again, um, I think the correct way to go about that would just be to speak to John Bain and, and he can put it on the PAC uh, agenda and then we'll move from there. It'll have to come back to council. So instead of sort of going backwards like this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going backwards. I feel like we received enough um, um, letters from the public about uh, the bylaws being enforced that I think I felt pretty obligated to put it on the council agenda. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're supportive of uh, Council Brent Sampson, we could refer this down to P planning advisory through John Bain and, and, and follow that track. Because I think you're exactly right in the sense that that's where the discussion needs to happen if there's going to be changes to zoning or, 
or municipal planning strategy or municipal planning areas. Does that sound like a good path forward? Yeah, I, I think Brenta, it is a land use bylaw and, and it is an Alma Dam, but um, the bylaw is gonna affect everybody in Richmond County, even though it's just a land use bylaw in Alma Dam, because we're talking about Grand Lake here. But when you're talking about dwellings, uh, you're not talking about RVs or campers. It's, it says that the, the definition of a dwelling is, is not a hotel or a motel or a travel trailer, right? So one dwelling per lot, one RV per lot, that, that you know, in the future, to me, in my opinion, is, is going to have to be discussed and amended. Uh, so I think it'll affect everybody in Richmond County, to be honest, right? And I think where we're going wrong here is the definition of a, of a, of a campground, right? So for me, uh, you know, during the campaign, if anybody were to follow my campaign, I talked about the Acadian campsite and the fact that we've never replaced the Acadian campsite for 35 years, right? There's not a campground on, on the dam. Uh, and uh, we want to encourage campgrounds on, on the dam. We, you know, our goal is to get a campground on the dam, uh, but our goal is not to uh, take uh, the people uh, that have travel trailers here on, on the dam and let them leave the island. Uh, our goal is to attract people and tourists to come down the dam. So I think what's going on here is like uh, Madam Morton alluded to, we've had many letters uh, of concern uh, that some, uh, some of these RVs and, and travel trailers are, you know, just family and friends gathering on private property uh, for the summer, campfires, you know, uh, get togethers, family and friends, and, uh, you know, this is not for the entire summer. These people are, are on Grand Lake and then uh, they, they go away to other campgrounds during the summer. But uh, I think uh, when, you're, when you're deciding that one campground per private property or one RV, uh, yeah, we got we to gotta have a discussion there to, to, to look at amending that stuff, right? And, and what, what constitutes an RV? A recreational vehicle. Is it a boat? Is it a pontoon boat? Is it a sea do? Is it a speedboat? Is it a four wheeler? You know, like those are discussions you got to have, right? You know, so uh, when you're talking about one camper on one piece of property, yeah, that's uh, that's tough. And 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 listening to all these concerns, um, I think a lot of people would agree as well, right? That uh, we have to look at this. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Brent Sampson. Yeah, no, and, and I heard from people as well, and I know that uh, that zoning doesn't apply here, but I know, you know, we're obviously Plan Richmond is looking at zoning, and I encourage people to reach out to Plan Richmond to, you know, express their concerns that they don't want to see the same thing, you know, instituted. However, again, this is all sort of a wasted discussion at this point, because it's got to go to PAC first and then refer back to Council. So, um we can pretend something's going to happen tonight, but other than just referring this to PAC, which doesn't even have to go through this meeting, I mean, it could have just been brought up to them. Um, I think we're kind of just wasting time here discussing it at this point because there's a process to go through, and I'd like to see it dealt with as well. Because I, 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 yeah, I, I honestly, I, I have concerns with it as well. But again, this yeah. isn't the place. That's what the planning advisory committee, and it's a public committee, and. Yeah. Or, you know, able to show up to that. So, in other words, I have nothing else to say because I think we're just wasting our time here tonight. Oh, no, no, and and, and that's okay. And that's okay, Brent. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, for sure, we we got to refer to PAC and, and whatever. Uh, but I think we owe it. Uh, I think we owe it to the uh, twenty-three participants. So, minus us, I think we owe it to the, the nine or ten or eleven participants that's been here for two hours and 39 minutes to have some kind of preliminary discussion on it, right? That's why they're here and that's why they're on this call, right? So I just wanted to have a preliminary discussion uh, on that situation. Thanks, councillors. Uh, Councillor Jathan. Yeah, I, I guess, uh, you know, I'm kind of caught in between both, uh, you know, on, on Brent's side, he's right, just got to go through PAC first. Mm -hmm. However, uh, kind, of like counts, kind of like Councillor Sean Sampson and yourself, I feel that, uh, you know, when it's brought to our attention, it definitely got to be addressed, whether it goes through the PAC first or whether it goes through us or their, uh, or their line of contact. And, uh, you know, if we sit back and wait for somebody else to make the move, then uh, at that point, it might be too late for some of these people. And, and obviously, uh, they put us in here to do a job and, whether the outcome is what they're going to want or not want, then, 
you know, so be it. But yeah, I guess, uh, you know, PAC is, uh, is where we're going to have to go with it. And uh, again, like Councillor Sean said, uh, I think, um, I think some of these bylaws that have been written for a long time definitely have to be looked at and, you know, adjusted or changed and uh, how we do that. Well, it might be with consultation with some of the listeners that are on here now and, uh, you know, and so be it. But again, we'll uh, send it off to uh, Mr. Bain and he can direct us and what he feels is our next step. Yeah, uh, thanks, Councillor Digden. And I, you know, just not to be uh, overly disagreeable, uh, Councillor Brent Sampson, but I don't think it's ever a waste of time for us to let the public know that we're, uh, you know, we're responding to their concerns. And but I do agree with you 100% that that there's a process. So let's let's yeah. follow well, that process. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I just don't want them having the impression we were going to do something about it tonight just because it's the incorrect process. So I, I don't want to fool anybody sitting here waiting two and a half hours to find out that. They more or less wasted their time because we can refer it to PAC. And I, I want to see it dealt with as much as anybody. I just, I don't want to make believe for people on here that uh, we're going to make a big show of it tonight and the process There's was no big on. show, Councillor Sampson. It's just yeah. simply uh, open for discussion so that we can let the public know that we're taking this seriously and uh, and it will be dealt with uh, through, through the proper channels. So, all right. Well, thanks everyone for your comments on that. Um, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'll be, we'll, be, we'll all be looking forward to the next planning advisory committee meeting and, uh, to see, you know, to see what the next steps are. So for now, let's leave these particular discussions about land use in Richmond County and see what happens on them in the coming days and weeks. In the meantime, here's another discussion from the recent Committee of the Whole meeting for Richmond Municipal Council. It's about a federal-provincial funding program called the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, or ICIP. At the recent Richmond County Committee of the Whole meeting, there was a lively discussion on which projects should receive funding for this particular program if Richmond's funding application is successful. But there were also concerns raised by an Isle Madame councillor about the possibility that even if the funding program goes through and Richmond's application is successful, that it could have an impact on ratepayers in Arishat and Petit de Gras in the years to come. Let's hear that discussion right now, beginning with Richmond Chief Administrative Officer Don Marchand. Both projects are on our, 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 uh, our five-year capital plan. Um, He's, he's ranked them in priority from uh, obviously sewer, sewer treatment uh, issues that we've had, we have in Erisha and Pizagra and the former landfill closure work. Um, as part of the application process, we're required to have a recommendation uh, from council to proceed for each project. So that's essentially what he's asking for. Um, I guess the other thing he's recommended that we pr provide them in that priority uh, unless council has any other any other projects that they'd like to see done or uh, reverse those roles, it's it's uh, it's all it's all up to you folks uh, to decide. Um, but there is there is a deadline to to uh, to uh, to apply. I'm just not exactly sure what date that is, but I mean we, we have plenty of time to do it April now. 1st. Yeah, the, the, all the preliminary work is done on both of those. Um, uh, we have uh, consulting engineer reports for each, and uh, and of course that's because they were on our capital plan, and we've been planning and, and planning this for quite some time now. Um, so yeah, so uh, what we basically need is a recommendation from uh, council, and uh, Chris will proceed with the uh, application for the ICIP funding. Okay, thank you, Don. And, and I would just like to say before we jump into this, the discussion on this, please extend our thanks to Chris and his team with Public Works who would have supported this because it, it's really helpful and a really thorough briefing note. Um, so thank, please extend our thanks in that regard. Um, councillors, do you have any uh, thoughts, any uh, discussion uh, you'd like to have on this? Well, for, for me, uh, Madam Morton, I, I would agree with the uh with the way that it's prioritized for sure. And it's exciting for me to see, uh, you know, some, some funding coming down the pipeline for uh, Arishad water and uh, the, the, the sewer treatment plant for Arishad and Perry So that's, uh, that's exciting now for sure. And I, again, uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, Chris and his staff's uh, work on this and, and yourself Don. So yeah, I'd like to see it stay uh, the way it is prioritized. Uh, uh, I had a few questions Don, uh, you know, it says that 
the policy states that we can only provide 1 million, uh, which leaves us a shortfall of the 2.2 million. Uh, and uh, that would, you know, when it comes to a loan and a, you know, a 20 year plan, uh, it looks like a 24% rate increase to our sewer, uh, to our sewer customers. Uh, now that 24%, is that a net, uh, Don, is that a total? Or uh, again, we, we, we put some, some numbers in reserve this, this year. Uh, and, and we've seen some increases go up at you know, 5% in Pritter Girl and 16% in Airship. Uh, is that 24% uh, where the total has to be? So are we talking another 19 and another 8? Or is that another 24% over and above where they're at today? Well, those are, are certainly estimates, and, and I'm sure the numbers aren't exact, although uh, it's still all dependent on how much. Uh, funding we do get. I know that the uh, percentage of funding is 73%, or yeah. I believe 73.3%. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, the, the, the municipality can only contribute a million dollars, but that's based on the actual, uh, the mm -hmm. actual uh, terms of the, of the, of the, of the bylaw. So until we get some more uh, solid pricing and until we can maybe determine what all these numbers mean, um, I wouldn't be too sure on that exact number. I know I'd be prepared to support that, um, those recommendations and in the, in the priority listed. Um, if, if others are in agreement, um, could I get a motion from, uh, from council to that effect? I would need to state both the, um, both the projects and the, uh, and the, uh, the priority. prioritization. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll make that motion, Madam Morgan. Okay, so the motion then is to um, accept the recommendation of staff to proceed with uh, an application for ICIP funding for the Airshot Pitted Bra sewer plant replacements and the legacy land foreclosure work uh, in that priority. Does that sum yeah. it up? Okay, so that motion is made by Councillor Sean Sampson, seconded by Councillor Brent Sampson. Um, any further discussion? Question. Okay, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. And there you have it, folks. That wraps up this week's edition of Roundtable. Thank you for tuning in, and thanks to the Municipality of the County of Richmond for providing us with the footage from the Committee of the Whole meeting. If you have any thoughts or suggestions for future editions of Roundtable, or you'd just like to comment on what you've seen over the past half hour, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me directly. My phone number is 902-625-8863. And you can reach me by email using the address adamjrcook, cook with an E, at gmail.com. You may also contact Halil Community Television directly. The station phone number in Arishat is 902-226-1928. And you can also reach Talil by email using the address info at talil.tv. And just a reminder that the Talil Studios in Arishat are open to the public once again. However, you will have to wear a mask just before you go inside. You can also follow Talil on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget that our YouTube channel has every single episode of Roundtable, including this one, as well as our sister programs, Talil 24-7 and Not Cote. And we also feature the local analysis of Nova Scotia's COVID-19 media briefings, which are simulcast live on Talil whenever they come up. Once again, that's it for Roundtable. I'm Adam Cook. Thank you for joining me this week. I look forward to seeing you again next time with a brand new show. Bye for now.